Barrett, Victor Echo 4, Bravo Delta Echo, back again with the uh, Tandy 102. Um, I have uh, encountered an issue with the power supply. Took the computer over to my friend's place who was kind of interested in it and uh, wanted to see it. So I took it over and was going to demonstrate to him uh, saving and loading from a cassette drive. However, as soon as uh, I powered up the unit, it came on and then shut down. Um, disconnecting everything, removing the batteries, hitting the reset switch, put everything uh, back, connector, uh, cassette cable, uh, batteries back in, powered it back up again. It powered up and I was able to load basic and when I went to go and uh, and uh, do a C save, the computer shut down again and ever since, oh of course now it's going to load up. There we go. That's exactly what it's doing. So we're uh, having an issue with um, the power supply. Um, it's not generating VDD or VEE, uh, which is the negative voltage for the uh, uh, LCD. So we're going to go in and troubleshoot it. There's something that's preventing it from oscillating. Obviously, the components, the main major components of the uh, circuit appear to be working because I do get intermittent power. Um, I've already checked out the switches and stuff like that and mechanical connections to the battery and verified all of that. So in this uh, video we're gonna I'm just gonna run through the uh, troubleshooting guide for uh, troubleshooting the power supply. So I've got the board removed and the power supply section here this is uh, the section that we're going to be looking at. Uh, this is a DC DC converter that provides uh, the voltages required to run the computer. I've got the service manual up on the computer here on my laptop and I'm going to uh, read through it and try to explain the operation of this power supply. So OT2, which is this uh, transformer, um, is a converter transformer which oscillates T21, which is this transistor here, and T22, which is a surface mount transistor on the back. It generates voltages at the secondary side of the transformer. At the same time the power is switched on, a very slight collector current flows to T21 and T22. As the current is flowing through, OT2 is increased. The voltage between 8 and 9 of the converter transformer cause pin 9 to be positive. The positive voltage is applied to the base of T22, which is the transistor that drives this guy here through R126 and C81 to activate T21 and T22. So these this transistor here this is the actual this is the uh, power transistor and T22 is the driver transistor that drives this transistor. Voltage passing through the two resistors on the back here. So we've so or resistor and capacitor you get R126 and C81 and there's T22 so these three here drive the transistor on the other side and this uh, produces a, an oscillator fully charged C81 stops the primary current the secondary magnetic field begins to collapse reversing the polarity of the induced voltage causing pin 9 to become negative by uh, being applied to the base of T22 C381. The voltage is used to turn off T21 and T22 as capacitor C81 discharges. So once, uh, once the first cycle happens, the capacitor is charged up, base current stops, and the voltage, uh, the magnetic field collapses, reversing the voltage, allowing the capacitor to discharge which will turn off the transistor and then it'll allow the uh, C81 to charge back up again and oscillate and the cycle repeats. So discharge C81 allows the transistor to turn on again and repeat the cycle. The switching frequency is determined by R126 and C81. The output for the various electronics here is uh, derived from the secondary windings VEE, which is the negative 5 for the LCD, is uh, from pin 9 rectified by D15 and filtered by C85. VDD is from pin 7 
rectified by D13 and filtered by C84. Also, VDD is fed back to the base of transistor T13 through a Zener diode to maintain a voltage of positive 5. So that's a crude regulator after the fact. So since we have uh, no voltages on C84 or on uh, C85, so these are the filter capacitors for the outputs for VEE and VDD. We also have no voltages on the points labeled on the PCB here, so it's, it's zero volts here. Um, when I'm testing it, obviously the thing works intermittently. That means that uh, this guy, this circuit here, is not oscillating. So we're not getting the proper power generated. So either we have something uh, causing instability or the one of the components in part of the oscillator circuit is no longer functioning properly. So um, with the schematic here, I can try and help you visualize it. So pin 9 when you apply voltage you get a voltage spike on the primary which induces a voltage on the secondary that from pin 9 passes through R126 to C81 that allows base current to flow through T22 which can drive uh, uh, T20, uh, T21 and then T21 will allow will stop current flowing through the primary voltage collapses, reverses the uh, reverses the uh, the polarity of the voltage here, discharges the capacitor, and allows T22 to shut off, which allows this one here again to sink power, um, creating voltage on the primary, inducing voltage on the secondary, and it's an oscillation back and forth. So these two components here are going to be my main components that I'm going to check first because if these guys fail there's no oscillation. Then from there checking the state of the driver transistor and the power transistor 22 and 21 um, will also affect uh, be the next step in making sure that this is all working. Now there's other this capacitor here C62 this could create instability in the oscillator and other resistors here in this section of the circuit could create instability if they're not working properly. This diode here will also have to be checked because if this is open or leaky, it, it could cause an issue with the voltages that are present on pin 9, um, allowing this thing to oscillate. But it does appear to be some kind of an instability issue uh, that seems to stem from placing load on the power supply. So we'll start with these uh, two, this capacitor and resistor here. So just uh, doing a basic reading of uh, R126 with my meter, um, still attached to the board. Um, the resistor's got a marking of uh, 271 on it, which means uh, 270 ohms. And that is that was double checked um, on the uh, in the manual here. So you've got R126, 270 ohm. And I'm getting a reading of 270.6 ohms, so that guy is in uh, was within spec. So we'll move on to uh, C81. So C81 has no markings on it, but looking at the manual, you can see that C81 ceramic resistor has a uh, capacity of 1,000 picofarads, and uh, it has a tolerance of 10%. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to attempt to measure this guy in the board. Hopefully I don't have to remove it. It uh, depends on how it's wired up in the circuit, how much leak current there is. Um, uh, sometimes you can measure a capacitor in the circuit. Sometimes you have to lift a lead. Um, it really depends on how the current leaks. Um, so you, you do need a meter that has a capacitance measurement on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure this capacitor. And hopefully this... Uh, this uh, meter will even uh, read this low. So gently heating and removing C81 and uh, measuring it, I'm getting a measurement of 0.1 nanofarads, which is significantly lower than what uh, what it should be. So that, that 0.1 nanofarads is uh, roughly 100 picofarads. I'm just using a quick calculator on here to make sure my math isn't uh, messed up or anything like that. So this is... Uh, 
about uh, 10 times lower. It's at a value by about uh, 10 times. Way out of the 10% uh, tolerance. So I'm going to see if I can find another capacitor um, that I can uh, jam in here and uh, hopefully this solves our problem. I'm going to take a peek here. I might be able to snag one off my uh, donor Game Boy, one of my donor Game Boy uh, motherboards and uh, solder it back in place and hopefully this will solve our power issue. So after a bunch of trial and error removing a whole bunch of capacitors from uh, a Game Boy Pocket and uh, Game Boy Color uh, parts PCB, I did manage to find one. It is uh, significantly smaller than the one that was removed from the Tandy 102, uh, but it does read 1.182 nanofarads so it's right within range uh, 1000 picofarad plus or minus 10 percent it'll just be a matter of seeing if I can actually solder this guy into the uh, into that board um, without creating any issues or solder bridges because it is significantly smaller but uh, this very well could be so the solution for uh, my lack of power so I did uh, actually manage to solder it in place right here um, it's not the prettiest soldering job, but it was a very, very tiny component. What I ended up having to do was uh, plate, put it in place and apply pressure to it with my uh, X-Acto knife while I soldered it. Tack down one end, and when that end was tacked down, I could uh, kind of create a little bit of a solder bridge, which is that blob you see here on this side, uh, to the other uh, terminal on the capacitor. and. Uh, doesn't appear to be any uh, any solder bridges so we're gonna go ahead and try and fire it up and see if this was the uh, solution to the uh, the power issue I was having and uh, it doesn't seem that that was the problem I'm still getting the same issue it's firing up and crashing so something else is preventing the uh, the circuit from oscillating properly um, it'll run for a couple seconds and stop. So we're going to have to continue to venture on, and then the next spot that uh, we will probably take a look is I'm going to take a look at this diode, make sure that this guy is working properly, and I'm also going to take a look and make sure that uh, C62 here isn't shorting out, and then there's also this uh, C100. Make sure that these guys, these are part of the oscillator, make sure that these are functioning properly and uh, check the other resistors to make sure that uh, they are still in spec and hopefully uh, shortly we will have a, a solution to the power supply problem. So I removed C62 which is this guy right here which off of T22 bridges uh, across uh, the emitter and the base um, so that would be that capacitor could cause uh, some stability issues. Now, the curious thing about it is when I removed it, the solder connector right on the back of this uh, capacitor came right off. So that could very well be an intermediate connection uh, causing issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try and find another capacitor to jam in here. And uh, we're looking at a 0.01 microfarad, which should be uh, significantly easier to find. I, actually, I think I came across a bunch in my little pile here because um, it's a more common capacitor for like bypassing and stuff like that. So I'm going to jam one in there and see if that solves the problem and uh, we very well might have fixed this issue. So again, I managed to find another one. Again, it's incredibly small compared to uh, the original. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to put it in place, hold it down with the exacto, tack one end down, and then uh, solder. Uh, the other side and then wait till it cools and solder the other side again and uh, hopefully that uh, this broken connection here uh, on this capacitor was the reason why the oscillator was becoming unstable and uh, refusing to oscillate. So C62 new one is in place and uh, again we'll give it a shot we'll throw it back together uh, in a temporary fashion Flip the power switch and uh, see what we get. Hopefully we get uh, some stable power and uh, the machine doesn't crash. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Computer powers up. It never does this the first time around. 
If you've noticed, I've also uh, replaced all of the buttons uh, since I've had it had it open. My uh, new switches came from eBay, so let, let's uh, let's try this out here. Let's try and run the program. Program is running. All right. So uh, it seems uh, it seems we've got uh, the uh, computer running software again. Let's try and shut it back down. Give it a few minutes. Yep, it seems to have found, we seem to have found the problem. So we had a capacitor that was out of spec, and a capacitor with a bad connection replaced them both. And now we have stable power, and the computer is again running and operating as it should. So, hope you enjoyed that uh, quick video there on uh, some basic troubleshooting. And uh, hopefully, if anybody else is having some uh, power supply issues, this this will uh, help them uh, solve the problems they've had with their power supply as well. Thanks for watching, Victor Echo Four Bravo Delta Echo Clear.